Hi everyone, this is Angie and Michelle, and welcome to our video presentation for Introduction to American Sign Language. When people think of learning a new language, they typically don't think of learning sign language, but there are many reasons why knowing ASL can be beneficial. Firstly, ASL has its own grammar and vocabulary different from those of English. Even though there's no speaking involved, it makes use of the eyes, hands, face, and body. In addition, over 28 million Americans are considered deaf. Deaf communities are present throughout the United States and the world, and they have their own culture and histories that are worth learning about. An ASL online course would help bring awareness to deaf culture and introduce people to a new form of expression to communicate with an entire population. Although there are many online resources that teach ASL, unfortunately many of these are not useful for a novice. A majority of tutorials found online are actually inaccurate and end up being examples of what not to do. In addition, access to these resources and ASL courses are often costly and inefficient. With an online course to teach students sign language, these resources can be made available to the public with real-time feedback and practice. For our instructional goals, we focus on giving an introduction to deaf culture and teaching basic ASL. Specifically, we wanted them to identify differences between signed English, ASL, and fingerspelling, recognize that there is a difference between the sign language of different cultures, the difference between big D and small d deaf, and recognize the reasons for providing accommodations for deaf people. In addition, we wanted students to be able to identify the parameters of a sign, the non-manual markers of a sign, and recall the meanings of five basic greetings. For factual knowledge, we used straightforward multiple choice questions to assess students' learning. For skills, we posed questions like this. We presented an animation of one of the greetings and asked learners for appropriate responses. The choices available were also presented with animations. To assess principles such as using ASL over signed English, we had self-explanation questions for students to engage in generative processing. We made sure to include these formative assessments in our instruction and to give feedback for any of the learners' answers. Our initial scope was very wide. We wanted not only to teach people how to recognize sign language, but also to learn how to sign and to fingerspell. However, we ran into initial problems, such as creating assessments to verify whether students were signing correctly. That would require complicated computer vision and machine learning software, which would be time consuming and outside of the scope of the project. After conducting an expert interview, we learned what would be feasible to teach in the time frame and narrowed down our scope to our current instructional goals. We then created our initial assessment questions and con conducted three think alouds. Our theoretical CTA models the process of a learner when asked to choose an appropriate response to an animation of a basic greeting. We revised our theoretical CTA after an expert interview, adding another path a learner may take to solve the problem. When students select multiple choice answers, they may or may not take the additional recall step of generating their own response before recognizing the correct response in the answer choices. One of the insights we found from both the expert and novice interview was the importance of including interpreting or interpreting the context of ASL in our instruction. In the expert CTA, we found that the same signs can be used in multiple contexts. During novice CTA, we found that students answered multiple choice questions by interpreting the context of the sign and noticing the facial expressions and body language of the signer. With this in mind, we incorporated ASL practices and interpretation of sign language in our instruction. After we drafted our instructional content, we went back to an expert for feedback. The expert helped clarify our own misconceptions about some of the content, including differences between sign English and fingerspelling. For formatting, we used Qualtrics for instruction, and the default layout highlighted learners' answers choices in red, which caused a lot of confusion because it made them think that their answers were incorrect. So we changed the layout to a blue theme. For wording, the expert also pointed out some questions with ambiguous wording, and we fixed those accordingly. 
Our first instructional principle was the use of multimedia to support generative learning by making connections between words and graphics. We used images, animations, and text throughout our instruction. Secondly, we applied the coherence principle by simplifying our instruction to avoid extraneous processing. We used concise language and used only relevant visuals to support our instruction. Next, we focused our instruction on engagement and promoting both psychological and behavioral engagement to support generative processing. To support FAR transfer of learning, we used examples and practice, such as hands-on activities with self-explanation questions, formative assessment questions with feedback, varied context work examples, and active comparison of varied context examples. Our innovative principle was temporal contiguity, which involves combining the translated English text with the ASL sign animations. This allows for better integration of text and visual images through synchronizing words with the corresponding graphics and presenting the text and graphics together in an animation. So our research question was, is there an observable difference in engagement with formative assessments? Our hope was to decrease extraneous processing and improve sense-making. In our A-B testing, we use four different forms. An A-group form, the A form with flipped assessments, a B group form and the B group with flipped assessments. For group A, we gave students the instruction that contained animations without captions. For our B group, we gave students instruction that included captions in the animations. We also used random assignment to determine which form to use for user testing, for which we had a sample size of 20. Our data showed no significance of pre to post test scores. A potential explanation is that our treatment violated the redundancy principle by overloading the visual channel and increasing extraneous cognitive load. The limited cognitive resources in the visual channel were shared in processing both the animation and the printed text, so the meaning of the signs shown in the animation may not have been selected and organized into mental representation. For future work, we would want to conduct a difficulty factors assessment. The pre to post test learning gains weren't great, so we'd like to see how we could improve our assessment questions. We would also like to include more instruction to teach students how to sign and include interactive elements that would allow students to practice their signing and receive real-time automatic feedback from the system or practice conversations online with other ASL students or experts. This would allow us to measure their engagement beyond post test scores. We could also use additional parameters such as eye tracking and time spent on formative assessments. Thank you.